only thing left. I'm your only provision. I want you to go reach hurting people, knowing that you're hurting. So I can reconcile them back to myself for my glory. So it's his work. It's not my work. I just to be, I'm to be his hands and feet. Amen? And then get out of the way. And I remember the first time I had the opportunity to leave one of the folks or the guys named Jake Baylor who worked at Subway to the Lord in the parking lot of Surf and Java with the rain coming down. He accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Savior and he says, I feel like a brand new man. And I says, you are. You have found new life. The old is gone. The new has come. And since then, we've had the opportunity to take part in God's work and watch him do his reconciling act and see 36 people come to baptism since that day in June of 2019. 36, and there's been more that have gotten saved, but we've had 36 baptisms. This was, we've had a couple more since then, and we've got three more next Sunday. So meet us at the cross next Sunday night at 6.30, and we'll have three more baptisms um, coming. But this was, Hannah helped us with this. And give the Lord a praise offering for Hannah. God uses her. She's back there going like this. We know who you give the glory to. We know, but we want to show you this uh, video of baptism. Take this off. Jesus set the example of ministry and calling to God when he was baptized. Now you might want to say, well, why was Jesus baptized when he never sinned? Because he was predicting his death, burial, and resurrection at the beginning of his ministry. For him to go in the water was representing his life before he was crucified, died, and buried in the tomb. When he went down in the water, it represented his burial. When he came out of the water, it represented his resurrection. It's the same picture that we're doing today. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who, through Jesus Christ, reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So not only did he reconcile himself to us, but he desires for us to go out and encourage others to be reconciled to Christ. And so through that, that the world might be reconciled to him, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, therefore, is there for a reason. We are his ambassadors, ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. So that's called a witness. That's why we share Christ with one another. It's a new work every day. And so as we look at that today, I want us to think about being kingdom people, but it's a matter of the heart. 
For we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength. Jesus said, this is the greatest commandment. And the second is likened to it. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. As ourselves. It's a matter of the heart. And what do I say about that scripture? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. Do we need truth in our world today? Amen? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Somebody say, praise Jesus. That's what, it, amen. Because without him, as my mom said, we ain't none of us got a chance. I was doing a message on the murder part, you know, as we're going through the different. You have heard that it says, thou shalt not murder. But I tell you, if you have anger in your heart against your, even your enemy, at later down he talks about that. You cannot see the kingdom of God. And then it talks about if you call a person a fool. It's not a good thing. You're in danger of hell's fire. He wasn't holding back, was he? If you call a person an idiot, it's not a good thing. You therefore murdered him. And my mom says, what have you been working on all day, Travis? It's 6 this morning and it's 10 o'clock at night. I says, I've been, it was a Saturday, Sheila. Because my mom and dad, me and Sheila are walking the walk together. Because her mom and dad are a lot like where my mom and dad are. And so I have to go in. One reason you haven't seen much of me is because any day that I've got off, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is my shift three hours from here at my mom and dad to take care of them hand and foot. And I have to basically bathe him and wash him and dress him. And Sheila knows. And we do this on a constant basis. And within the next two or three weeks, it's come to the point where we got to put my dad probably in a home, and I'm trying to gather that up right now. I'm walking through that. I woke up the other night, and Sheila, I said, my daddy's almost gone. And you know, during the day, you're dealing with it, but at night, it kind of catches you. So I'm working through that. Pray for us, and I know you do. Thank you so much for your prayer, because we can't do it without you. But anyway, as we're walking through that, Mama says, what have you been working on? I says, well, I've been watching you murder, murder dad all day long. <laughs> They were fighting. Man, they were, Doug, they were going at it. I'm like calling each other names and everything. And as a child, I don't even know how to discipline them. I'm not supposed to discipline my mom and daddy. You should. I just stay quiet. I put my head down. Something about pills. I, I'm going to, you need, you can't have your pills. Give me my pills. And he, she goes, well, I'll give you the whole bottle. And he says, well, give me the whole bottle. And I'm like, don't give him the whole bottle. <laughs> But I said, if you have anger in your heart, Mama, that's when she said, well, ain't none of us got a chance. And I said, and that's exactly what Jesus is trying to tell us. But God, who was rich in his love and mercy, gave us Ephesians 2. Amen? For by grace are you saved, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast, not of works, but is the gift of God. Amen? Give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah for His grace, forgiveness, and love. How could we get past that? How could we ever get over that? If we get over that, somebody needs to light our fire. And that's the Holy Spirit who lights the fire. Remember when the tongues came down at Pentecost and stood over their head? There's the fire. Give the Holy Spirit a, a praise offering this morning. He is in this place where two or more are gathered. What? I am there also. Also, I don't, Hannah, I don't know if I need this mic. But when I think about this, I think about it's a matter of the heart. What do I mean by a matter of the heart? When I've gone through this series, I've gone through different kind of categories. Kingdom people is the name of the series. Matter of the heart is the subtitle. And it's we were made for relationships, which all go together. And we stack those on top of, get, top of each other. But here's the deal. People are watching us. People are looking, especially the lost. You know how a lost person is supposed to act, Rhett? Lost. They don't know the Lord. How They're going to do wrong things. We do wrong things. How are they going to make it? When they don't even know where the word, what the Word says, how are they going to know unless they're taught? And they're watching. You know what the number one thing I think they are looking for? Truth and integrity. That's why I picked this one. Because I know this church is about truth. I know this church is about integrity. I know the mission of this church is to stand on the truth and an errant word of God. Amen. 
And this is who we have to be as we go out into the world, as Terry was telling me this morning. He says, aren't we supposed to go and make disciples? Yes, we're to go. And the imperative is make disciples. That means walking with them unending. It means that me and Terry have known each other since 1993. And we've been there through ministry, through the ups and the downs. But you know what? We're disciple makers, aren't we? We are disciples with one another, and we hold each other accountable. And we're walking with each other. And I was telling Hannah, she's got Nicole. Her and Nicole are disciple makers, right, Hannah? And it's enough right there. But if we would all do that, we would be making disciples like crazy, wouldn't we? But it means we have to invest ourselves as a matter of the heart. When we lay our head down at night and we go to bed, this is the best place I can be. Bob, it's that place where I'm looking at God and it's nothing but me and God in the ceiling and God's dealing with me. No faces, no having to put on anything. It's just me and God. And God will say, how are we doing, Travis? And here's what I want to hear. Doug, I want to hear, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. But I once heard a, a, a Barbara Walters give Billy Graham an interview, and they said, what do you want to have God say to you when you enter kingdom, the kingdom of heaven? You've done all this, Billy. You've led millions to the Lord, and you've had all these crusades. What do you want to have the Lord tell you when you go into heaven? He said, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant, but I doubt he'll say it. And I felt like crawling in the carpet. He said, because... I'm just a sinner saved by Christ. He never lost his humility. May we never lose our humble heart. Amen? So when people are watching, do they see truth and integrity? I want to read real quick the scripture text for today. Will, will you go with me into Matthew chapter 5, please? Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. Now today I'm re reading from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Yours might be a little different. I'm going to read two different versions as you think about what do people see when I'm going about my day as a disciple maker, as I go and tell by the authority of Jesus. All authority has been given to me, Jesus said. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and have them obey everything that I am teaching you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. He's right there. Amen? We're not in this alone. He is the power. So as we say this thing about truth, he says about the ancestors being the prophets of old. And not only the prophets, he says, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. So I'm doing a little background here. He fulfilled the complete law. He was the fulfillment of the law. So he wasn't saying don't do it. He was saying, the standard's here. And a lot of people say that Jesus was telling these folks to raise the standard. He wasn't telling them to raise the standard. The standard was already there. It was God's standard. They had just lowered the standard. The Pharisees and scribes were the representatives of the day that were coming against Jesus, the religious leaders. And I think that's a message for the religious leaders today we have to be careful about. They were lowering the standard throughout all of this. And he was saying, you have heard that it was said, but listen, I tell you. So as I get ready to read the scripture, I want you to go back sometime today, and I want you to read throughout Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Just do a cursory reading of the whole thing. It'll bless your heart. Go back a little bit to get the prequel of it. He said, take heart in chapter 4 toward the end, for the kingdom of God is near. He said, repent and believe for the kingdom of God is near. Do you believe that today? That was Jesus. He was saying, here I am. And so what he did, he spoke in third person on the Beatitudes. The bless, I call them the blessed or the happy. Third person, he said, blessed are those. And then once you get through the Beatitudes and all seven, after you get through the first characteristics, he said, you know what you get after you do the first Six characteristics, you get to be persecuted for my name's sake. Yay! You get to be persecuted. And then when you're persecuted, you get to be salt and light. Amen? He said, for you, Mike Martin, are going to be salt. And he is. And light, Sheila. And you are. And he's going to be that way. And so he goes into the second person, you. But now when he goes into these 
six statements, these six statements to the people around him, you have heard that it was said, but I tell you, he's now in the first person, Doug. He's saying, look at me. I am the son of God. I have a message for you. The goal, I noticed it when I drove in. Y'all got basketball goals out there. George, they're 10 foot high, right? They're, they're regulate. Okay, he's saying, I think they're 10 foot. All right, they're supposed to be 10 foot. That is the standard for basketball. But you know what I did when I was a kid? When I played with my friends, I wasn't as tall as you, Mike, but I wanted to dunk that basketball. I dropped that bad boy down to six foot. I could dunk that thing backwards, forwards, and I got good at it. I mean, we were killing each other. Fouls did not count. We were holding each other and jumping up. I mean, we had no rules, George, no rules. We had lowered the standard. Well, I can, I can make baskets like crazy, Doug, on that six-foot goal. I mean, it was right there at me. I was just making free throws on that six-foot goal. Well, a little bit later, I went and tried out for the team. And the standard now was 10 foot. I was shooting air ball, air ball after. I mean, I was so used to the six foot goal, I couldn't even begin to get good at the 10 foot goal. That's what the religious leaders were doing. And when they say that Jesus is saying here, again, let's go to the scripture. It says, again, you have heard that it was said to our ancestors. And it says that it hath been said by them of old time. Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. Let's go to the next one. But I say to you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, nor it is God's throne. For it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by Thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. In other words, what the religious leaders were doing, they were trying to find loopholes. How can we get away from telling the truth and holding to our oath? And so they started swearing to the temple. They started swearing to the throne. They started swearing to, the, to Jerusalem. They even had it so broke down in the, what they call the Mishnah, which was a commentary on the law, they had switched it up so much they said, Bob, if you turn your back toward Jerusalem, you don't have to keep your oath. If you swear it away from Jerusalem. But if you turn toward Jerusalem, you got to keep it. Now, if you kept it in the name of God, you definitely had to keep it. But they weren't doing that anymore. They started bringing up, and Jesus is saying this. And so I wanted to read it out of the message. Listen to how the message puts it. And I don't say anything, and don't say anything you don't mean, Jesus says. The council is embedded deep in our traditions. You only make things worse when you lay down a smoke screen of pious talk, saying, I'll pray for you, and never do it, or saying, God be with you, and not mean it. You don't make your words true by embellishing them with religious lace. In making your speech sound more religious, it becomes less true. Just say yes and no. When you manipulate words to get your own way, you go wrong. Wow. And so what the Pharisees and scribes had gotten into the habit of was showing an outward appearance of religious piety and missing the inward heart of being right with God. And guess who can be that way really quick? Right here. We had a prayer the other night in one of our men's Bible studies, and one of the I don't lead the Bible study. I've got a man by the name of Rob, Rob Moy that leads our men's Bible study. And we ended with a prayer, and we were actually studying the woman who was called in adultery. And you remember that story where they dropped their stones? He says, you without sin cast the first stone, and one by one from the youngest to the oldest they were dropping the stones. Remember that? And he looks, and he sees the woman, and he said, woman, where are your condemners? And she goes, they're gone. I don't, I don't see them. And he says, neither do I condemn you. Most important part, go and Amen. sin no more. And as we went over that scripture, Rob ended his prayer like this. He said, Lord, thank you for your saving grace, for I am that woman. 
I'm the woman caught in adultery. Aren't we? That's how we have to see the saving grace of Jesus. Because it says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right? That is scripture. And so the first thing that happens with Travis is self rises up really quick. And I have to stop self. And the Holy Spirit says, put that down. Through the grace and forgiveness and mercy of God, praise Jesus. Amen? And so when I'm reading this scripture, as I went up here, I'm going to finish this. I just want to go back over it. You must not break your oath, but must keep your oath to the Lord. To the Lord. Say to the Lord. So when we're in bed at night, how are we doing? In the power of the Spirit convicting our hearts. I'm talking about our commitments to ourselves and one another. But it starts right here, right? Can anybody save you, Willis? Uh, no, gee, the Holy Spirit comes in, right? And we have to accept what Jesus offers in order to receive it, right? So it's this personal thing. Who's going to be there when we face Jesus at the end day? A whole bunch of people are just us and God. Here it is. Okay, it's a matter of the, say it with me, it's a matter of the heart. Say it with me, it's a matter of the heart. Are we real with God or are we just playing this game? But what people see, they are watching, but here's the one that's really watching. God says, I know your thoughts before you. He knows it all. You can't hide anything from God. I, I looked up scriptures, you don't have enough time, the clock's running. I've got all kinds of scriptures where he says, I know everything about you. I know you fully. You are fully known. And guess what? God knows himself fully. You, we don't even know ourselves fully. Why do you think it says that Jesus speaks on the Father to the Father on our behalf? Have you ever been there? I don't know what to pray anymore. I'm overwhelmed with my mom and dad. I don't know what else to do. And Jesus said, that's all right, Travis. I'll pray to the Father for you with groanings you can't even utter. I'll give God the praise and the glory of that all day long. I'll willingly give my life to him for that as a sacrifice. That's when the church becomes alive because there's people out there that desperately don't have that, that need that. And if we're a representation and a reflection of Jesus and we look in the mirror and the closer we get to Jesus, the more we see the sin that needs to be purified out of our heart, the more effective we can be with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Are we looking in the mirror? It's a matter of the heart. I don't want to look in the mirror anymore. It scares me. Both ways. <laughs> Spiritually, and I look at myself, and I can't remember. Well, I don't remember myself looking that old. I, I've changed. I'm going, you don't look so good. <laughs> but do I look at that way myself spiritually and humble myself before the Lord and say, God, forgive me myself, a sinner, unclean. But with new life, he says, for the old is gone and the new has come. Amen? That ought to give the Lord a come on, folks. The new has come. Do we live that way? The, mat, the, the physical mirror does not matter because in a blink, we're new in Christ. We're like babes in Christ. Milk and honey sounds good to me. That's what I think about. So as I look at this, the Pharisees were looking at this and they were saying, but I tell you, don't take an oath at all, either by heaven, because it's God's throne. Well, if I just take an oath to heaven. Well, look how they're trying to avoid the one who's on the throne. We do that, folks. How many have heard anybody make an oath in the name of the Lord lately? Just think about it. One thing that I, I've, I've come to understand, I'm going I'm to address you like Paul addressed pretty much everybody in the letters in his epistles. To the saints of river of life. How's that feel? You like that? Well, start calling each other saints. When's the last time you call? Hey, 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 Saint Sheila. How are you doing? It's good to meet you, Saint Sheila. Hey, isn't that, isn't that good, Saint? Do we do that? You know what it does? It raises the bar. How about Christian? I'm a Christian. On Highway 17, I'm a Christian. In Little River, on the Highway 17, I'm a... Uh, uh. I caught a... I was coming out of a parking lot the other day. You know, I called a guy an idiot when he went by because he about clipped my... I had to beg for forgiveness. 
I, did, I murdered a guy. Now, here's the deal. Did I chase him down and say, forgive me for what I just did to you? Now, that's a whole nother level, right? Now, he probably, my wife said he probably thought you had lost your mind. I know that. But I was convicted by that. It just came that quick. Anybody with me? Can I get a witness? Yeah, I've got some witnesses. Come on. Anybody else doesn't raise your hand. I need to follow you out of this parking lot today. All right. Okay, so it says this. Or by Jerusalem, or by earth, because it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, because it's the city of the great king. Neither should you swear by your head, because you cannot make a single hair white or black. In other words, God owns it all. And as my daddy used to say, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Now, he taught me. He was military, and he was, he was very strict <clears throat> to an understatement. He was very, very strict, and he still is. And he would tell me this, George. He would say, you can tell me no, and that's fine. Sometimes, it, well, I don't know if that was completely true, but you can tell me no, and that's fine. But if you tell me yes, you better come through. Y'all remember that? Now, wouldn't life be a lot better in the contracting world <laughs> if just, they could just go ahead and give you the real story? Or wherever you are in business, you know what I'm talking about. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. But this is what people are watching as a matter of the heart. Listen to this. As we use our tongue, this is how we make covenants, right? I say they're relational. We do it with our what? With our tongue. So we have to tell the truth and do not take an oath. You take an oath with your, with your mouth. Listen to this. There are six things the Lord hates, Proverbs 6, 16, and 19. Seven are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. But let's just stop right there, just a lying tongue. How about the part in James where James says, listen to this. He says, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a mature man who is also able to control his whole body. So if you continue reading that chapter, you talk about the rudder of the ship, how the tongue is like a rudder of a ship. It controls this big ship just with a small rudder, and, and it's like a fire. The tongue is like a spark that can cause a forest fire and blaze and create all this devastation. We have to be careful. Because guess what? It's a matter of the heart. Because people are, and they're watching. And they know. They know. So as we look at this, there were purposes in the oaths. The purposes in the oaths were the part where God was trying to communicate to the people a standard of inward getting right with God rather than outward appearances. He says it's not about the outward appearance. It's about raising, we talk about raising the goal, but just knowing where the goal and the standard of God is, and it comes down to the drilling down to the depths of our heart. So if you walk away from here, let's go to bed tonight. Let's go to bed this afternoon. Let's just get along with God and get in our secret place. You remember the scripture said, go in your secret place. Go in your closet and get a what? Along with God. And get there and say, Lord... Dive deep down into the pierce of my heart. And I just wrote this down for me personally. This is for Travis. You take it and pray over it when you go in your closet. How can there be peace in our lives when in the depths of our heart we are not at peace with God or one another? You know, we pray for... Wait, I saw it earlier. What is it? Why is this up here, Sheila? We're praying for peace. It's an inward desire, isn't it? We want peace. But you know, on this earth, I don't know that we'll ever see peace until we see God face to face. Amen? We got, the, we got this, uh, this um, devil roaming around like a roaring lion, Willis, wait, trying to seek out who he may devour. doesn't sound like peace, does it? And he ain't quitting because he doesn't want to see people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But what I'm talking about in regards to peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen? We've heard that. We know that's a promise from God. So what I'm looking at was we've got to get right with God. We've got to humble ourselves, get along with him, and say in the depths of our heart, 
or am I at peace with God? And God, will you please say to me as I go to sleep tonight, well done. Good, good and faithful servant by my grace and my, my mercy. Be a part of the work that I've called you to be a part of. Listen to me. Our church first started with me, God doing a work on me, because I'll never get there until I see him face to face. But I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep striving. I'm going to keep jumping, George, till I try to get that 10-foot goal. I'm going to strive with everything I got where he says, come unto me. Listen at this invitation from Jesus. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened. You there? Anybody with me on that one? Weary and heavy laden? And listen what his promise is. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Join up with me. Lock arms. With, come on. I, my grandfather used to yoke the ox and the mule together. And poor mule didn't have a chance. Fold it together. And when I go and work the harvest field, come on, let's plow this harvest field together, Travis. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So when I go right, go right. When I stop, stop. I don't do that very well. Um, sometimes I try to get ahead of God. Anybody with me? I'm trying to figure it out, and all of a sudden all the hair around my neck, like on an ox, starts getting pulled. And sometimes I get lazy and I start going slow and he's dragging me. <laughs> Everybody been there? And it's all about humbling ourselves and feeling the presence of Jesus in such a way we're walking together, Terry. We're yoked together. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And find, come on church, and find rest for your soul. Tell it with me. And find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Give the Lord a praise offering. Amen? That's what I'm talking about. That's life in Christ, Rhett. That's how we do it. And we do it with one another. I can call Sheila in a heartbeat. She brings the spirit up. She encourages me. Everybody give the Lord off praise offerings for Sheila. Amen. Come on now. That's not for you. That's for God. But she's a servant of the Lord. Amen, church? So listen to me. I got a question. How are we doing? I'm going to close it off. 11 o'clock. I got more pages in those notes than you want here. I'm going to show you how good I am, Sheila. I'm on this page. Look, Willis, Holy Spirit said you've done enough. <laughs> look, look, Sheila, look. God knows how to talk to our hearts. He can preach the message. My part is, for Travis... When I lay down at bed at night, and I wrote this out for me, like I told you, I got it circled. How can there be peace when in the depths of my heart I'm not at peace with God and and one another? Because I can get a pity party real quick right up here. I can get a chip on my shoulder. I can, I can come up with a pity party. Well, what I'm having, I don't know if y'all have that problem. Maybe it's just a Travis thing. And God says, Travis, will you please get over yourself? He does it with grace. He does it with love. But I was out yesterday going through some stuff in my mind. He said, this is not your work. I called you to this. If I called you to do this, I'm responsible for you. And you don't think I can handle this? I'm the one that's responsible. I said that I would be the only one you have left. And I'm enough. And you need to believe it and get over yourself. You're not doing this work. I am. And you know what? The 36 baptisms had nothing to do with me. They're all him. God is good. I, had, I, I mean, I get excited about it. Don't get me wrong. You know, it's obvious I get excited about it. Get excited. I, I love my Lord. But here's the thing. Our lives should make an impact on the lives of those around us. Building bridges into our community. We go into the park all the time. You know why? I have worship in the park because there's 300 people out at the park that aren't in church. And I take the church right there on the track to them. If they walk by the track, they're hearing some gospel. It's a multi-million dollar park and it's all mine. There's 300 kids on the ball fields. That's why I'm a part of the town, the T-ball the council. I'm on the council for the Dixie Shalote Baseball League and I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But they love me. <laughs> I just love children. 
And then I coach C-ball and Wee ball And there's 300 parents and children out there on Sunday morning. And I can't catch them all. But you know what? It's like the little boy that had the starfish, and they said, you can't save them all, son. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of starfish. And they were getting on to him, he said, and he was throwing them as fast as he could. And he said, son, you can't save them all. And he goes, I saved that one. And he picked up another one. He said, and I saved that one. And can I get a witness? I want to close with this. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. I want to just put truth definition up real quick, and we'll end with this on the invitation. Truth, the body of real things, events, and facts. That's the definition of truth. Integrity. Let's do that one. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Moral uprightness. The state of being whole and undivided. So when people look at a church, do they get that? Whole and undivided? Moral uprightness? You know the devil's coming after us. He hasn't got us because Jesus says, Take courage, for I have overcome the world. Amen? So let's accept that invitation. Come, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Rest for your soul. We're going to hold on to that yoke, and we're going to walk with Jesus because the harvest is plentiful. And I see some laborers. I know it says the laborers are few, but I see some laborers. Hey, can I get a witness? Amen? Listen to